In today's episode, we focus on a series of delays because good things come to those who wait and patience is a virtue. We're getting so close to the next Starship launch, but it really is looking like the earliest it will be is in October. Some of the most recent proof we have of that is from Kathy Leaders herself, so we'll get into that in a moment. Plus, Polaris Dawn also delayed. And we have an update from Firefly, which just celebrated its third successful launch. However, this one was not live streamed. I'll explain why. Shuttle has cleared the tower. So like I mentioned, Jared Isaacman shared on X that Polaris Dawn is now looking like it will be Q1 of 2024. When I interviewed Kid Poteet, he said that they were looking at this fall. So this is definitely a delay. And apparently, according to Jared, a big part of the delay is the new technology, which is taking time to implement with their EVA suits being a big driver of the timeline. Of course, Polaris Dawn is a development program, and Jared says they have no updates from NASA on Polaris 2, but they're hopeful they can help out with Hubble. Now, they have a plan to extend the life and capability of the exploration platform at really no cost to the government, according to Jared. We also saw a video of Kathy Leaders circulating around X, and I was really bummed that I wasn't there in person to cover it. Now, I didn't know about this event, asking my friend, Jean, who was there. Apparently, this was a private event for the South Padre Island Chamber of Commerce. However, he did get a few clips for us, so thank you to Jean for taking these. Apparently, Kathy is very funny and well-spoken, but she also gave us some little hints about Starship. All this means is that we're doing one more phase to get ready for flight. Um, and so we're looking at, everybody asked me again too, what's the date? Um, that's the million dollar question. And so we're working through our final stages with our licensing, but honestly also working through, when you got a new vehicle, there's always these last things that you have to check to make sure you get everything right for that flight. And so we're also working through that too. But our goal is in the process of uh, de-stacking right now to get ready for the final preps for the mission. One of the key things you gotta do is to be able to do the flight termination system, like I mentioned at the beginning. Um, and then the team will go through and just do one more time looking through the vehicle. We are always all the way up to flight. It's not like we say, oh, we're done, two weeks ahead, not gonna do anything else. That team and their responsible engineers for each of the areas are diligently continuing to look through all their issue tickets, figuring out is there anything else that they can be doing to make this vehicle and, and the mission be as successful as possible. So um, no rest for the weary. <laughs> These people have been working really, really hard to get going. And uh, um, I think uh, right now everybody is very excited to see that, that vehicle assembled at the pad. We, in one of the slides ahead of this, had we took a picture on Tuesday. Um, and, you know, I tell my team, I said, you know, these are, when we're in the, in the launch area, we sometimes don't stop and kind of recognize how amazing it is what we get to do every day, you know? Here's a clip from Kathy Leaders saying that they are in the final process of going through the compliance matrix. She's thinking that that will take another two to three weeks. So the prediction that we could see the launch in October is seeming more likely. What I really appreciate, honestly, is it's really tough to make sure that a um, space that launch provider is meeting all the rules in the FAA licensing process. And we just started, there's a new, there's a new uh, FAA regulation called uh, FAR Part 450 that is, is fairly new. And one of the things that you recognize when you have a new regulation is we all got to figure out what exactly do all the new parts of that mean, right? And so I think the FAA has been a great partner with us to work with us and work with our compliance matrix under this new regulation and make sure that we're showing the evidence that we are complying with 
the regulations that are established to really be able to, to keep the public safe. And so we're in that process now. I think we're in the final kind of process of going through that compliance matrix, working the verification. But the FAA needs to be able to have the time to go through it all and ensure that, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they also are standing up to say, we've done what the US government and the nation has asked us to do. So um, we, we have meeting, we've been obviously meeting very closely together and um, I'm hoping that we get this done in the next two or three weeks, but we just gotta do the work. Right, we just gotta do the work. I used to always tell everybody, we're not gonna fly till we're ready. And it still applies. <laughs> we're not gonna fly till we're ready. Now, this can be a bit frustrating because it's always a moving target with the launch dates. We know that the first Starship launch was talked about and delayed for over a year and a half, but it really does seem like this one is getting close. We also heard from the FAA Administrator Polly Trottenberg, who stated the FAA will issue a SpaceX Starship license in October at the soonest. SpaceX will also need a separate environmental approval from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So again, more indications that October is looking more likely, which I know a lot of us were thinking September, especially based on certain not Mars issued notice to Mariners. So it's really easy for us to get excited, um, but we'll just have to see what October brings. And if you are trying to make it, try to keep your plans flexible. Of course, we saw the full stack of Ship 25 and Booster 9, however, on Thursday, they were de-stacked in the morning. And on Friday, Eric Berger posted an update from the FAA on Boca Chica and Starship Flight 2. This statement says, SpaceX conducted a test flight of these Starship Super Heavy at Boca Chica, Texas on April 20th, 2023. As a result of that launch, SpaceX completed a mishap investigation with FAA oversight. This investigation analyzed the launch, mishap events, and corrective actions. Before it is authorized to conduct a second Starship Super Heavy launch, SpaceX must obtain a modified license from the FAA that addresses all safety, environmental, and other regulatory requirements. As part of that license application determination process, the FAA will review new environmental information, including changes related to the launch pad, as well as other proposed vehicle and flight modifications. The FAA will complete a written re-evaluation to the 2022 Programmatic Environmental Assessment, evaluating the new environmental information, including Endangered Species Act consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Now, if the FAA determines through the written re-evaluation process that the contents of the PEA do not remain valid in light of the changes proposed for Flight 2, additional environmental review will be required. According the FAA has not authorized SpaceX's proposed Flight 2. The FAA will provide updates with notification of any license determination or results of additional environmental review. So I want to know from you in the comments, are you worried that these reviews are going to take more time than we think and that the launch may slip past even October? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. There seems to be a lot of debate about this on the internet. And let's talk about the Firefly mission that was not live streamed, however, a very successful mission nonetheless. The U.S. Space Force announced that Firefly Aerospace successfully launched a Millennium Space Small Satellite on September 14th, Thursday. This was a mission designed to demonstrate capabilities to launch in a very short timeline than is typical for national security missions. Liftoff took place at the first available launch window 27 hours after receipt of launch orders, setting a new record for responsive space launch. Now, this exercise is part of an end-to-end -end tactically responsive space demonstration, which proves the United States Space Force can rapidly integrate capabilities and will respond to aggression when called to do so on tactically relevant timelines. This launch, called Victus Knox, was Firefly's third launch. And as part of the mission, Firefly tested an alpha stage to relight and targeted re-entry. And check out this video from a local news station. Many people were able to see this launch from Vandenberg 
and it's always beautiful to see launches any time of the day. So while the launch wasn't live streamed, we do have some video of it. And again, this is a major advancement of tactically responsive space capabilities. Space Systems Command and Firefly Aerospace successfully encapsulated a Millennium Space Systems built space vehicle, mated it to Firefly's Alpha launch vehicle, and completed all final launch preparations in 24 hours. And Firefly and Millennium last year were selected for the Victus Knox mission. We learned about two weeks ago that Firefly was on hot standby. This is awaiting an alert notification from the Space Force. And after getting the alert, the companies had a 60 hour window to transport the payload to Firefly's launch site at Vandenberg, conduct fueling operations and integrate it with the Alpha Rockets payload adapter. So yeah, they had to be on their toes and move quickly. Also, a little news update about Blue Origin. About a year after New Shepard's accident, Blue Origin may return to flight, finally. New Shepard is scheduled to launch in early October. A year ago, a Blue Origin-built rocket carrying a spacecraft exploded. There were no passengers aboard the New Shepard capsule, thankfully, and that capsule was able to push away from the rocket with its escape system and land safely under a parachute. But the failure of the New Shepard 23 mission happened at one minute and four seconds into flight. The vehicle had already passed through max Q, the point at which the launch system faces maximum dynamic pressure during ascent, and its BE-3 rocket engine was throttling back up to continue climbing on the suborbital trajectory. We got an update about this failure about half a year after it happened. Blue Origin noted hot streaks on the rocket engine's nozzle and determined it was operating at higher temperatures than it was designed for. Now, back in March, Blue Origin gave an update saying that they were implementing corrective actions, including design changes to the combustion chamber and operating parameters, which have reduced engine nozzle bulk and hot streak temperatures. And at that time, Blue Origin said they intended to return to flight soon. We hadn't heard much in the past six months. But now, according to Ars Technica, and really according to two sources familiar with the company's manifest, it appears Blue Origin will finally be ready to fly the new Shepard launch system again. So the uncrewed test flight could be as early as October. And if this goes well, Blue Origin is planning its first crewed mission since August 4th of 2022 to take place in mid-February of next year. So I hope that you guys enjoyed a little bit of a news update. Again, I just got back from Europe about a week ago, so I've been trying to readjust, which I finally have. I hope that you guys are having a great day and I wish you a great weekend. I will see you soon.